What's going on everyone, Jack here from Half Chrome, and no, this is not an Avada review. I think actually a lot of reviewers miss some super important things that I want to point out. In fact, I think this is absolutely the most important drone to the FPV community. And I've got three reasons why I think that. Stay tuned. Okay, the first reason, and I think the most important one, is this one includes DJI's AirSense with ADS-B. So it'll sense uh, airplanes in the area. It also has DJI's Aeroscope, which means it can broadcast things like remote ID. That's right, this drone is going to be remote ID compliant. Now, I don't know that 100%, but I'm pretty darn sure. And you know, that's just one drone, but that's not the thing. The thing is the air unit, the new air unit that you're going to be able to buy for your other drones, also going to have those same capabilities. That means you can be remote ID compliant as well with the purchase of an upgraded air unit. Now you may be thinking, I don't care, I'm not going to do that anyway. But manufacturers do. By the end of September of 2022, they're supposed to be compliant. Now I know that's probably getting pushed back, but it's not getting pushed back forever. And I think this is really good news for companies like Emacs and iFlight because manufacturers have to be able to sell drones that are remote ID compliant. They can buy an air unit, stick it in their drones. For people that want to comply or follow the laws and regulations, if people start cracking down, and I don't think it's gonna happen right away, but there absolutely will be areas and local law enforcement that say, hey, you know what, this is a rule and we're gonna enforce it. And if you happen to live there, you're out of luck. Unless, of course, you comply. And this is one way to do it. Now, I think the air unit is going to be expensive, but not only are you getting that compliance, you're also getting a better camera. I mean, the camera on this thing is pretty fantastic. So, so maybe you sell some GoPros. That'll help you afford some of these air units. I think that's going to be a big deal, a really big deal. The other thing is, this is just really easy to use. The DJI FPV Potato Drone, as a lot of people like to call it, really easy to use. It just... It's intuitive, you can pick it up and fly, you don't have to go through beta flight and all of those things that make this hobby very frustrating for people. Ease of use is important and this opens a lot of doors for people to be able to fly this thing. And I thought it was kind of goofy that they shipped it with this remote to start, uh, but the more you fly with this thing, the more you'll like it. It's actually really fun and incredibly intuitive. And now that we have head tracking, it makes it a little bit better. And whether you use that remote or the standard remote, it's really nice to have this stop button where you can kind of just push a button and stops and hovers in midair. There's nothing really like that. I mean, how nice would it be to just push a button, take the goggles off, get your composure, put the goggles back on and then continue flying and not break a prop. That's gonna be awesome. Now here is the thing. This is actually a really usable tool, much like a traditional Cinewhip. I mean, it is a Cinewhip, but it's just easier to fly. This is absolutely gonna end up in photographer's kits. It's just a great addition. That's unlike this guy, the FPV Potato. Yeah, it was fun, but really what was the purpose of this? I mean, this thing is really too big to freestyle. At least I thought so until I saw Max Air 420 doing it. Uh, but it, for most people, this isn't the usable tool that the Cinewhip is going to be. Now, I don't think FPV goggles are for everyone. And I will bet that this remote here, the DJI RC, is going to be compatible with the Avada. It just makes sense. They are putting this in a niche where people that maybe want to see the image on their screen but can't find the goggles could use it. It's going to change the hobby and the more people they can get into the hobby, the better. And I think opening it up to this remote is going to do that. I mean, this drone is just so incredibly stable that it's going to be easy to fly. People that fly Mavics and things like that are going to have an easy transition to this drone. And then if they choose to get into manual mode or acro mode, they can do that as well. Now, if you haven't already seen original Doa's video, you're going to want to check that out. He actually uses it much like I'm describing, where he flies through a house as a real estate shoot. And if you ask him, he flew that thing in angle mode. Yeah, you can do that. This, this drone is going to change the hobby. It's going to change FPV. And there's a lot of good that's going to come from this drone, right? The technology, the camera, the air sense, the air units, the new goggles are awesome. There is a lot to like about this drone and it's moving the hobby forward. You don't have to like DJI, but that's a hard thing to debate right now. 
I kind of feel bad for Walksnail and HD0 because I think they're going to be left in the dust as soon as those air units get dropped, especially if they help make things remote ID compliant, unless they have a solution already in the works. It's going to be a game of catch up for those two. Okay, so now I want to hear what you think. Am I off base? Did I miss something? Or did I hit that nail on the head? This Avada is coming and it's going to be pretty fantastic for a lot of people. If you're thinking about picking one up, I'd love to use the affiliate links down below or just use an affiliate link. Go to Amazon and buy a pair of socks. It helps this channel out either way. Anyway, good luck and happy flying.